It's good to be here. Thank you for making me welcome. And it's always interesting when somebody introduces you and rattles through all the things you've done. But if there's nothing that you take from that, the only thing that I would say is that I've done a number of things over my lifetime. And the wonderful thing about that is that life's a journey. It really is. And I've been a lawyer. I've been a banker. I've lived in different parts of the world. Um, I'm now in politics. I'm now the Attorney General, which means I'm the chief legal person for New South Wales. An Attorney General, what does an Attorney General do? Maybe I can help explain what that is. It's a big long word and even though I did law and I studied law and I worked as a solicitor, um, I wasn't even really sure what that meant either. I knew that people who are Attorney Generals spoke with a lot of authority. They sounded like they really knew what they were doing. And I knew that Attorneys General looked after all the courts and the judges across our state. And I thought they were probably pretty serious people. They usually sounded like they knew what they were doing. And yes, they were mainly men. It's got to be the, the thing. Attorneys General were usually men. So, you know, what was wonderful, Premier Mike Baird, the Premier of our state, rang me up a little earlier this year after the election and said, would you be the first female Attorney General of New South Wales? And that was just a wonderful privilege for me to be asked. And um, when you look back at the long list of attorneys general, they go right back to the early colonial days of Sydney. It was one of the first positions that was set up um, all those many, many years ago. But it, the, the, the role has a strong, proud history within our state of upholding the laws and making sure that everybody feels safe. I'm called the Chief Law Officer, which sounds really fancy. Um, but it means that when any laws or bills come to Parliament, um, I have to look at them and I have to recommend to the Governor that they should become laws because the Governor is the person that assents to any laws in our land. And I'm like a guardian, if you will, of what our law is like. So although I'm a politician and sometimes I have to talk politics and I love doing that as well, I kind of have a more long-term role in the state. Whereas I'm a, so I'm a guardian of the law, so that it looks after all of us, not only for today, because there might be some bad things going on today, but if we're going to make changes to the law today, because there's something really bad that's happened, or something really good that's happened, how is that going to impact our laws across time? So I have to take a bird's eye view of things. And what I protect as the guardian is called the rule of law. Most democratic countries have a rule of law, and that means that the laws are clear, you understand what they are, that they're applied for everybody. The law is the same for all of you. You are all equal uh, in the eyes of the law. And you probably heard that expression, equal in the eyes of the law. That's why the rule is so important, because there are countries across the world where that is not the case. And that means that if you are um, better connected, you have um, uh, more money than somebody, if you live in those countries, the law may be fairer to you than to anybody else. But that's not the way we live our lives in New South Wales or in Australia. We want the law to be equal to everybody. So that's my job, to make sure the rule of law is what we have that makes our everyday lives much simpler and much fairer. So what's it like being a politician? Well, you know, when I was your age, I didn't think about politics that much. I didn't say, I'm going to be a politician, I'm going to run for parliament. Um, it's a simple question that I'm posing to you, but it has a really complicated, long answer. What I like to think that a politician means for me personally is that I can reach out and help lots of people across our community. I can, particularly as Attorney General, make the case that we need to change our laws. And for me, it's the biggest community role that I think you can have in our community. So it's a role I absolutely love. I'm so passionate for what I do every day. It doesn't mean it's easy. In fact, some days are really hard. But what makes it easier for me is the fact that I love what I do. And there is not a day where I get up out of bed and I may have had less sleep than I'd like to have where I don't say, I am so lucky to be doing what I do. And I wish for all of you fine young women here that you find something in your life that gives you that same kind of pleasure and that same kind of fulfilment that I have had being a politician. So, politics. Well, politics is pretty tough. It's pretty competitive. 
Unlike when I was a lawyer, there was no textbook when I came to politics. No one said, there is the book. If you read that book, you'll know how to be a politician. Uh, when I went to law school, of course, there were books, there were teachers to ask, there were tutorials, and I could get more knowledge and build my knowledge of what it would be when I had to be a lawyer. You know, I think it can be a little bit lonely at some times. I think sometimes when you're in leadership roles, and maybe Grace has a little bit of an insight in here as a school captain, it can be a little bit lonely because you have to lead and you have to be a bit courageous about standing up to things that you think inside your heart are important and you take a risk that not everybody's going to agree with you and say you're a good person. But that is the challenge but also the joy of being a leader. Well, why is politics so tough? I use that word and maybe if I can make that real for you. It's tough because it's about, it's a debate. It's a debate about ideas. It's a debate about how we can have a better community. And, you know, whether that's on Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is, social media, uh, when I tweet something out, there's no shortage of people that come back and tell me I'm wrong or I'm right. And that's part of our healthy democratic society, that people can have the opportunity to say, no, you're wrong, or I agree with you, we should do more of that. So it's tough because at the centre of, of it is how we can make our community better. And you have to be ready to have that contest because I think it's one of the most important things that we do. I thought I'd touch on a little bit women in politics because we've seen a little bit written up about that recently. You know, should there be more women in politics? Why is it they're not in politics? Do we need quotas to make sure that women are in politics? And I absolutely think there should be more women in politics. Absolutely think there should. I think women bring perspectives, not only because they're women, but they've had different life experiences and sometimes they're mothers as well, which enables you to bring that to any decisions you're making around the cabinet table. I think it's not only about celebrating the first woman that does this or the first woman that does that. It's also, well, who's going to follow? So we make it more like the common thing. It's not just a one-off. So I would hope, in the way that I'm the first female Attorney General, that now um, women who are coming to politics are saying, well, I can be an Attorney General too. And I know that's possible because someone's gone before me and done that exact same thing. I don't think it's harder for women to succeed in politics. You know, I've worked in different places across the, ro uh, across the world I really love being a woman and you should be very proud of being young women and young girls. You are very precious and you bring your own perspectives to whatever you're going to do in your lives ahead of you. And the reality is, as you probably know, there are more women who are business, more men who are business leaders. There are more women who, more men who chair boards. And you can see I want to say women because that's where we need to end up. And what that will take is for women to put their hand up, to be given a little bit of help along the way, but to think about themselves being in those roles, to see that that dream can become real. So girls of St Catharines, you should be very proud of a wonderful, wonderful school that you go to and the opportunities that you have. And I've given you a little bit of an insight into what I do. Um, I'm so pleased to have had that opportunity to share that with you. And the thought that I'd love to leave with you is whatever you do in your life, it will be a journey, you will do many things, and that will be a wonderful thing. And if you find that one thing that you love and you are passionate about and you follow that, whatever it is, uh, that will be a good thing for you, for your community, and for the children that you may have as well. Thank you.